it's a really opportunity for me to, to come to the digital futures to share what could be shared with young people. And I also appreciate that uh, some people behind uh, in Zoom and uh, maybe later on we'll see this presentation and generate some question or discussion. This is the main objective. Uh, I have some drawback. I, my sound is very low, very often. <laughs> so if, if it's not just listening, or, uh, I will try to speak loudly. Okay, what this lecture is about for 45 minutes is prepared for very public people who are not really very much in mechanics or mathematics or control, but still uh, some type of flavor of uh, what kind of engineering it means. And um, uh, I should say that in uh, developing of examples which I showed today, many people get involved. And uh, most of them are from Scandinavia, some of them from Germany. I just listed some of these people. And the story is so long that somebody already passed away. So I just mentioned, especially Anders Robertson, one of our best loved colleagues who get involved with it for a very long time. Okay, so what plan for today? I will try to formulate some mathematical problem and make some comments about that, and then consider only two examples. And the first example, I will start immediately as explain what kind of problems appears in engineering, which has a very big relevance to mathematical analysis and control and mechanics. And uh, and then <clears throat> I will come to another example and have one slide for concluding remarks. Okay, so if I jump to program which I plan to show you is eventually this one. This is a physical recording of a human who been asked was asked to, to do some performance. And in this case, it's uh, sitting down on a chair. So it's uh, let's say person has been asked. Of course, we he was put some type of. Uh, reflecting balls on his uh, uh, clothes uh, such that uh, we can record what positions uh, on different joints, different links shows up. Okay, so this is a, it's not cartoon, it's physical performance of a human. And uh, of course I have a question to you at, at some point, maybe you can ask, uh, we can discuss it later on. Can you recognize nationality of such person? from these pictures, what kind of features we have on that one. Because it's, we might think that the people are different countries, make different performance different. So it's really, it would be very interesting to see some type of awards to whom it looks like. But anyway, at the moment, it's just some type of data we need to process and analyze because uh, a few years ago, we get contact with Samsung and say, we would like to have a robot, which humanoid robot, which would like to sit down in a chair. Because typically bipeds are just walks. But walking is not really the most important motion we have. Physically, if we get adult, let's say old enough, you need to have some type of privacy. You would like to operate in your room. You would like to stand up from a chair, go to a restroom, sit on your bed or whatever. So walking, maybe it's not only primary objective. So you need to really get manipulation of your body moving up or pick up something from shelf and so on. So we observe real behavior and would like to let's say scale such behavior from healthy person, it's, it's, I would say this is a man, normal conditions, just ask him to do whatever he wants to do whenever he sits down. Okay, and then, uh, I think I need to stop it because it goes on forever. Uh, then we come to formulation of problems behind reproduction of such or let's say extraction of knowledge from such behavior and the production of that type of performance for another robotic system or human, because for us it's a robotic system now. Yeah, one feature about this particular motion is that there is many motions which could be done by human in many different ways. So where environment is not very important. Let's say the way I grasp this object is not so heavy. I can basically manipulate it in my hand. I have too many fingers to make a context and basically do whatever I want with this mouse. However, in the, there is plenty of motions which require from a human brain to learn something. And learn, this learn something, it requires time. And particularly, I'm sure that none of us are able to immediately sit down, sit, stand up without some training. Like, because we need to train our muscles and work instead of gravity, in gravity field, because we have no such big muscles in ankle joint to rotate the whole body. So there is plenty of motions which require some type of knowledge or learning process in us. And this is a question how it's done by human, we will not discuss, but human should solve some mathematical, mechanical problem in performing such behavior. 
Okay, and what does it mean? It means that uh, I will try to formulate that through a number of slides, what kind of problem formulation generically shows up here. So we believe in Newton law. <laughs> so it's really something which consistently repeatable in many, many situations in such scale. Motions which require half of second, let's say person sits down and stand up about half of second, and in gravity field, and then let's say massive human is not substantial to rotate the whole globe. So we can expect that the Lagrange equation works well. So in this type of model of the system, we will see a number of models which could be developed for reproduction of this particular behavior. We have number of points. So of course, differential equation itself, but it depends on number of degrees of freedom. So how many should be taken into account? Do I should take into account motion of my hands? Or let's say, or just torso or just uh, knee joint and so on. Then I have uh, what kind of control efforts I can apply. I can assume the human really can apply to, let's say, generate such behavior, create this motion. Then of course, there is plenty of constraints. For example, one constraint is that my, my foot doesn't slide enough. Either. There is many other constraints. And uh, let's say number of degrees of freedom representing behavior of the system. This is part of our model. We, we know that eventually human is not rigid body. This is like connection of rigid bodies because we have 70% filled by liquids. I mean, if I would like to ask for myself, what could be the model like that? I should be frozen <laughs> because liquids eventually should be moving inside of me. So this model is conceptually very different from what we observe in the human being. And the typical task would be to plan or analyze such force motion and the design control to, to make it insensitive, reproducible. And this is also very important for control people, because people who are involved in mathematics. The standard concept of asymptotic stability or some type of uh, analysis in limit here is largely not applied because motion exists for half a second. So you need to think that some type of reproduction should be formulated in a format where the process do not exist forever. So it's really some type of new challenge in mathematical problems that could be formulated just on top of the, what we have in the recorded experience. And of course, uh, many of us would think that this type of uh, experiment related to the <clears throat> human brain activity. And people in Karolinska or other type of medical studies will say, okay, so how human really control uh, neurons, which basically generate certain signals to muscles, how we perceive or measure certain various type of uh, conditions of human performing this particular action. We out of that dis discussion because we should look just at the possibility to make this motion through mechanics of the human. Of course, control system developed by a human over the evolution is only one realization of possibility, possibility to generate such motion. So th we are robots physically. We are built of, let's say, some type of links, which basically control due to the muscles, but we could uh, later on reproduce such by another actuators, by another measurement system. And this generated great problem because mass distributions will be different. Talks generated different joints will be different. And eventually humans are much constrained mechanical system. Our muscles are what? It just look like springs. Cannot absorb energy from mechanical to electrical and backwards. So controlling robots much easier conceptually. But it's, we don't know how to do it in many situations, but this is a message. And then a uh, typical way is to, to look at this problem as a problem of artificial intelligence. What kind of information we can extract? And I will make a few comments about it because typically we think that what kind of methods available in, in uh, uh, AI tools? And this could be, a, let's say, classification recognition. So what could be the, let's say, way to uh, segment this information we recorded in pieces? What, what most important part of the representation in terms of how many links I should consider whenever I observe such emotion of a human? It could be, let's say, reformulated as a certain procedures on, on the discrete time system. So let's say aggregation of states, because we live in continuous time, but aggregation of state, let's say what happens in, with some type of information followed by, by, let's say every 10 milliseconds or whatever. And then we have, uh, let's say clearly 
many people clearly search for certain type of connection because we, we see mark of chains or some type of dynamical system behind that. So what kind of transitions between states? We know physically that Newton law is in place. So by any aggregation, we'll immediately flow, generate some type of connection between different nodes in a graph if we try to approximate such use. And of course, uh, at the end of this type of various uh, uh, software tools, we generate very complicated scenario. If, for example, I look at the scenario, not on sit down, but grasping object and connecting it to robotic settings. So I need to approach to the particular object, grasp it, reorient in my hand, put it into the hole, fix it. And making this type of scenario is very good in the artificial intelligence. But what happens in physical world, whenever I try to analyze and reproduce on a robot, you see, well, like sit down, <laughs> open the door. So is it appropriate? And this is what I would try to say that very important behind the scene is not really, I mean, we, we have one piece of information, Newton law. Another piece of information, various representations of that, of that type of process from uh, top view. And this is what I would like to mention here, that eventually we have real world, mechanical system, human or whatever environment, which really dictate our behavior. And then various type of mathematical representation of that model or behavior we have to generate various abilities of that mathematical object or real object. And now I'm talking about formats of generating that ability and show one example of learning from a human behavior to put it in a robot or something which generated without really clearly way it's done by human because human cannot do some performance we are going to, to implement on a robotic system. Okay, and in this way, there is a number of questions. Let's say immediately to any type of tool we have uh, from, from optimization-based arg arguments. How we can replan this type of actions into segments of really elementary movements, primitives, which are physically consistent. Because this type of action, the go right, go left, makes some type of motion, particular time moment uh, for the, one of the limbs and so on. This type of, it's not really physics uh, compatible yet. And then of course question, what robotics uh, suggest in it, because this type of things is not about robotics, it's a generic approach. What physics suggests to you is way to generate separately motions and separately controls to stabilize motions, to make, make them. So this is not done in humans. Humans physically do behaviors which combine. This is like way to generate sits down. And if you have 100 steps, 100 times, maybe last one will be implementable, but all along all these 100 attempts, you will always generate just open loop trajectories, more or less. It's not about feedback design. So in robotics, you need to, to recognize that there is a different values on motion planning and motion control. Typically, motion planning and representation of motion is much more valuable things. And you will find many controls which utilize <laughs> these particular motions, which can make it implemented. Again, and this is why I'm going to talk just about motion play. We have lectures in the class, and I see students in the room who we spend some time on developing some analysis of stability or so whatever. But this is on top of motion planning. Motion planning should be resolved somehow. And this is what I'm going to illustrate by examples. Okay, now I have some type of representations. It's uh, very generic slides. You see, uh, depends on the application you're going to work. So I assume that there is certain ability, which is like sitting down or grasping or whatever, which is now listed and feasible for that system. We, for example, have a system which we can observe behavior. Then we, we need to mimic it on another platform or re redo something, become something changed. So we need to see various types of, it's not clear what does mean representation of that, but we will see it in a minute. So it's various features, which is not sufficient itself to represent the particular task you're going to do, but features which will be part of that particular task. For example, it's a representation of mechanical system. What will be the mass inertia of objects you're going to manipulate or stand up? What will be robots which are going to, let's say, make certain locomotion pattern for them? It's physical parameters. What will be condition of contact between my shoe or robot shoe and the floor? <laughs> what could be number of coordinates requested for describing the state? You see, the human is about 200 states. If I count all the bones, 
and the joints and also. Clearly, in some motions, you need to have five. For some motions, you need to have six. For some motions, you have hundreds. So it's really depends on the motion. It's not, I mean, people who comes into the mechanics, they will say, okay, let's model the whole system. Okay, if you try to model the whole system, some of the dynamical features may be not important for some of the motions. And these motions, again, should be created by feedback. So, and this feedback is not necessarily to be made by potential forces or realizable things which are compatible with mechanics. Okay, so it's that's external inputs. What could be else? Constraints. You know, in mechanics, is one of the great problems is modeling constraint. What happens in between different, let's say, the subject ob object whenever, for example, I'm grasping it and my fingers start to slide. How physically move the course? It's a very challenging question. And what's more, something about motion dependent. Let's say maximum velocities, monotonicity of various variables, let's say maximum control torques applied or feasible to apply for the system to generate. But this could be part of the representation of motion I'm looking for. And then, of course, something about feedback dependent. Uh, so the current trend in, in uh, let's say, be inspired or analysis of human locomotion is that eventually feedback is not generating particular, whenever I locomote, feedback is not generating my brain, particular, let's say, trajectories. It generates certain type of low dimensional, let's say, reduction to various some type of uh, low dimensional systems or dynamics of the system, which represent some type of patterns of the locomotive behavior. So, and we need to understand what kind of invariance this type of feedback generates. Of course, we don't know what human is doing, but we can make observations and have a model, try to see what, what really happens, at least in some examples. Okay, it becomes too wide, too broad. Let's come to example. Um, you see, whenever we analyze human emotion, I need to make a number of choices. So I showed you already experiment recorded. So let us assume that whenever human sits down, so we segment data that not really how he approached a chair, how he start. Suppose that we already see the time moments whenever the motion happened. So he from stand up position start to really sit down on the chair. We can well approximate, yeah, I can repeat the motion. You will see that eventually in torso, you have to have number of degrees of freedom, not only one torso, like big trunk. It could be something more, let's see. If I try to repeat this experiment, you see how looks his head, for example, how looks the neck, neck behavior. You see that there is some flexibility whenever it moves. So let's try to forget about that. Try to see some type of really essence of the movement itself. And in this way, we will Approximate behavior of human is just by three link rope, so which works. So we assume that right hand side, left hand side of the body is symmetric. So it means that it's a, it works in horizontal, in vertical plane. And <clears throat> we have uh, one joint here, one joint here, white joint. And the rest is a rigid bodies. So we can approximate the parameters of that machine uh, by, let's say, anthropomorphic data for approximately height is given in, in uh, let's say, uh, various studies. Let's say for for it's eventually collected from uh, dead bodies. <laughs> so analyzing what happens with uh, this part and this part of a human body, and uh, we will assume now that system driven by Newton law. We assume that we already have taken all the constraints imb embedded in, into dynamics of just three link robot, and we will make one more important assumption: is that uh, the muscles in ankle joint are so slow, so low say in, in generating talk that we will neglect it completely. So whenever humans really sits down, it's just make coordination of of uh, this behavior of knee joint behavior and torso joint behavior. Nothing more. So something happens in hip and knee. And we have recorded uh, this is a very interesting question to also people who start this business. Suppose that we make hundred such trials. What can we average, for example, each trial? to get some type of average behavior for the human representing somehow. And uh, can we average uh, some other features? And it turns out that it's very challenging because 
uh, it might happen that if you just average behavior of individual uh, degrees of freedom, you can, in average, obtain some behavior which will be not realizable for the human. Very strange fact. So average in motions per se is not really a useful thing. So we will pick up particular motion and say, okay, this is the recording. So whenever I sit down, so what happens? So if I stand up and start to sit down, this joint will decrease, and we will choose, choose it as a motion generator, which represents behavior of all, all other degrees of freedom. So it means that, so we positive direction this one, so it will decrease, and on this uh, picture, you see, we start from the, this is exactly the representation of data, not written as a function of time, but written as one geometrical variable as a function of another geometrical variable. So the, let's say, ankle, QP means passive, let's say start, start to some big number and it makes, it gets smaller. You see, this picture is eventually not very interesting, except, uh, except one particular thing. If I try to approximate it and fit some polynomials, which could be, let's say, a way to reconstruct the behavior which we measure, of course, with some type of, by, by, let's say, external measurement system with some type of uh, discretization. You see that this is could be a polynomial for the three. It's not enough to have order four because we, or order two, because we have really some type of curvature one way and another way. And uh, this has been done. And suppose that eventually our control system or human control system, which performs such motion, was indeed developed controller which make this relations invariant. So it means that whenever QP moves somehow as a function of time, let's say angle at torso and E should be approximately equal to these functions of that variable. So, and we just get immediately geometrical invariants, which are shaped by our control system. So, and if along that motion are differentiated, I can get this type of relation on first and second derivatives. So polynomials are well differentiated functions in time. And this type of prime means derivatives with respect to the variable QP and so on. And then I look at the, my equation of motion, which I believe again, that this is a good model to approximate, even though I need to introduce more variables here to say that I have, let's say, flexibility at, at neck and so on. And observe that, of course, I don't know tau one, tau two. So this is a control input generated by muscles at knee and torso, but I know that at ankle joint, nothing happens. Let's pick up this equation, which is guaranteed that the human found a way to make some type of synchronous behavior of all degrees of freedom that this equation will, will hold. It's hold not because of our control system, it's hold by, by environment, by, by <laughs> design of the, the world around us and the mechanical system represented by a human. And if I substitute these relations, derivatives in the first line, I get equation which look like this. It's second order equation, which will be dependent just on one variable QP, passive. And interesting question to look at the face portrait of, of that dynamical system, which was generated just observing one behavior. And the uh, face portrait is here. You see, the human starts with some angle there, makes some type of deceleration and goes and this point where you have already, you, you, you touch by, by, uh, by your body, the chair. You see, interesting feature of that, it turns out that this face portrait is, let's say, of a system, is a center around this equilibrium. First of all, secondly, is that if I would like to shape slightly all parameters of my system, it will not change. It will be some small modification of, of this type of face portrait. We can try to do that. It's not really, it's an analytical result that if I have a center, then it will be with small perturbation of all parameters will stay centered. So it's like that structural stability shows up here. Secondly, if I start with some initial conditions in vicinity, again, this face portrait generated just by observing one behavior. If I generated initial condition, condition shift, clearly it will be something very, very, very clear behavior of, of that, that variable. And interesting question that whenever I approach a chair, I approach it with constant velocity. You see, almost constant velocity. And if would be, say, we, we would be able to imagine what happens afterwards if somebody will keep a person by, by his foot, so it will pass through the floor and return back to the same position. So this is extracted just from Newton law and observations done by, by, by uh, 
let's say, by external cameras observing what this guy is doing. Okay, so I listed that, and this becomes really strange artifacts, which we are going to use for motion planning of robotic system, which basically need to do the sit down on different platform. I, I restructured that also some interval, there is no equilibrium of that dynamical system. It's a piece of periodic trajectory. And then for human, we have some type of three phases, accelerating, decelerating, and reach constant steady state almost. And <clears throat> that solutions in neighboring initial condition will exhibit the same type of behavior. Okay, now I come into the robotic system, which was proposed by Samsung for analysis. So it's a real, uh, it's a robot. So human was about 170 centimeters. This guy is about 150 something. It's smaller, but it's much more heavy because made of metal. And it has many actuated degrees of freedom, and especially in, at, uh, for most of the robots nowadays, there is a quite big actuators at the uh, ankle joints. There is various, let's say, way to model this dynamical system. And it's not three degrees of freedom. It's, I, mean, I think we model 24. <laughs> Eventually, it's very big difference in, in dynamics of that. But good point here that indeed it's made of the solid components. It means that this equation is really correct up to some extent. It's not for the human whenever you have a floating fluid in your cell inside of it. And what we start to do, we start thinking that if I try to find a human compatible motion of the robotic system, I will do the same thing. I will assume for the moment that first, let's say, at first that this degree of freedom is passive. Of course, it has some type of actuation, but I will neglect it at the moment. Secondly, I will say, search for some type of relation which are geometrical invariants, which will be built in by my control system for the dynamics of the machine. And what kind of functions to choose? Okay, and then we have analyzed already motion of human. It was enough to see only polynomials of order three. This is, we're not looking for the same parameters. We just see the order of that approximation. And it turns out to be a very important artifact. So, yeah, and we have number of specification listed on what could be maximum torque in different type of joints and so on. And the most important thing, it's also constraint, but also limitation on time. Human sits down in half a second. So we'd like to have human compatible behavior. And what we do, we choose the same relations with unknown parameters. You know, I'm not yet formulating any mathematical problem. I'm just saying the representation which was done for the human becomes already incorporated directly in this formula. So polynomial photo three between passive degree of freedom, which is hypothetically passive for our robotic system and all other degrees of freedom, which are actuated. Then uh, we try to fit all constraints with present. For example, lack of choice of the parameters for the search such that, such that, for example, reduce dynamics, which appears in this case again, this type of zero when we have a, no actuator physical on dynamics of the robot. Here it's the same type of alpha beta gamma equation which appears in, 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 with different coefficient depends on the parameters we haven't fixed, but we don't need to have, for example, equilibrium on certain interval. Like in a phase portrait of alpha beta gamma for analyzing of human, it was no uh, additional equilibrium with system in particular range of uh, QP angle. And the same equilibrium appears whenever gamma is zero or this guy infinity. And listing all the parameters physically in, 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 and impose them on that type of parameter. So number of param parametric relations or constraints will be much higher than number of parameters. So it's overdetermined problem, but it turns out that we will not solve it by optimization. It turns out that there is a, a lot of physical parameters, not physical, but uh, let's say numerical parameters for this type of synchronization function such that phase portrait becomes like that. You see, there is some equilibrium here, and this is part of the cycle, which goes on very, of course, the shape of the peak of that type of phase portrait looks very different, but can, qualitatively it's the same. And this is part of the motion we have, we have suggested to, to the robot to, to do. And uh, I show you, and there is, uh, what is visualization of that behavior? This one. So you see, we get very similar behavior of robotic system, just taking two artifacts. The, let's say, format of representation synchronization function between different degrees of freedom performed along the motion and the shape 
of the phase portrait of reduced dynamics. And it turns out that this has become something which we are going to, let's say, propagate to many, many other examples. This becomes the idea for representing behaviors of one system and bringing this to another system. Okay, I'm not sure how much time I have. I have about now. Perfect. So then I come to another example. And this example, so this is practically important. This is a way to develop a mechanical system which could be, let's say, helping human to sit down or stand up. But uh, let's say another system is educational. And this is about, let's say, process whenever you need to manipulate objects which you cannot grasp. And uh, this uh, system appears to be, let's say, uh, for repetitions, like a critical example for testing various technology, how it works, and it, it exists for more than 20 years. And uh, uh, there is, I will show you a short movie <laughs> made by, I'm not sure if you heard about Brian Douglas, the guy in the United States who made some type of control-oriented recordings. And he has done recordings about that particular system, about that particular person who built it, as my postdoc previously, who eventually made this possible Okay, let's see. I hope that it's still here. So have you seen this guy before? You see, no? Maybe it's good, but what is here? So it's eventually the shape, it's called butterfly because it's look at figure eight shape and people in Carnegie Mellon call it butterfly. <laughs> okay, let's see what the performance we are going to find. Of the butterfly robot. He is saying something, but it doesn't matter what he's saying. So the task is to eventually to roll this object around the shape and return it back. You see, the issue here that for human, I don't know anyone who is able to do it. That one actually wasn't that bad. So but we even suggested on, on a bigger shape. Well of course, we can test all Americans. <laughs> but uh, we have suggested such type of experiment be performed by by on some exhibitions by anyone and even suggest money for it. So you see, uh, but now you understand what is about. So we human control systems are extremely complex. Yeah. So that's right at the moment. But if somebody is interested, just look at this movie later. On. So we search for the performance which are impossible to do for the human. So what could be suggestion, what to start with? So there is no, nothing to copy. And there is plenty of, let's say, performances which could be done in robotics, which cannot be physically copied from human. Or if it's copied, then it should be done differently because human is not optimal. Object. Okay, so uh, we first need to model such system. So let's say if we consider it in a vertical plane, then we have a, one object rolling on a shape of another object. And we see that how many degrees of freedom, how many parameters we need to choose. And for shape, which is this figure eight, we need to have at least one angle to represent its rotation. And for the disk, let's say we will abstraction this. This is clearly it will be, whenever it's rolling, it will be also rotating, let's say, because we have some asymmetric format of making this type of pl plates where I mean, if it's slightly changed, then it will be rotated as well. But we will assume that this will be just, let's say, center of symmetry and angle. So it will be another three variables. So it will be four variables at, at least we need to have to describe this dynamical system. And we have some constraints. What constraints? The, the disk, whenever it rolls, is not sleeping. And the disk is really in contact. So it, this is two other constraints. So we come to the situation which I described exactly in the beginning. So we have, yeah, we need to discuss what kind of choice of Variables we have, I said it should be four, at least four, but this is very important for analysis and generating new performance. The, the choice of coordinates should not be global. It should be local and representable for behavior you're looking for. For example, one choice would be the distance between center of symmetry of the disk and the shape. So written as one variable W. Another, okay, this is angle to rotate. Another variable will be the distance to go along the shape for the disk to roll. 
another variable angle to the disk to 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 rotate in in a frame which attached to the attached to the <clears throat> let's say uh, to main body frame attached to the frame <clears throat> okay I, I, if interested you will read how they introduced but the question now that this is already one of the most important steps in solving this problem. I would say that whenever we published this paper some years ago, that it was presented at ICRA. This is the first time when I saw that the paper was nominated simultaneously for the best paper award for the conference and best student paper award for the conference. So it's eventually, see that the solving of that problem requires just a couple, couple of ideas. One of them, choice of coordinates. And it's everything, mechanics, way to write to, Good coordinates for representing behavior you're looking for. Generic representation of dynamics sometimes very useless for representing particular motions. You need to have local representation of it. This is part of the story which I start with. Think about what kind of representation of the motion you have to have, which is most compatible with your behavior. Okay, then again, believe me that in that dynamical system, you of course, it could be questioned why a system not sliding or sliding when it was conditions for sliding or sliding. But suppose the system is not sliding, this disk, whenever it rolls, then we have four variables. We have, uh, let's say, one control input, which is torque rotates the, the frame, and then two constraint forces of one. And for that particular system, I can reduce the dynamics because the constraints appears to be holonomic. In general, it will not be. And if, if you, for example, consider the rolling of this disc on a shape on your hand, which I showed you in a minute, for the human, it's not how long. <laughs> and human able to do that. Okay, but anyway, if it's under various assumptions, we're able to reduce and forget about constraint forces, we get dynamics, which will be very normal. It's like cat pendulum or let's say two link robot or whatever, when you have passive dynamics of one variable and another variable is activated. And we search for the, Let's say three variables input and two angles, which will present behavior of rolling. And this variable psi, this is angle of rotation of the disk on the shape of the, whenever it's also on the shape of the butterfly. And it should be, suppose that we start with a situation, suppose motion is given to me. It might not exist, but if it's given, how to find it, how to represent it. And I know that whenever I choose particularly this psi variable as angle of rotation of the disc fixed to the body, body frame of the butterfly. This is angle of the rotation of the butterfly itself. And clearly whenever it moves forward, it rotates, the psi increase, let's say monotonically. It's not necessarily with constant speed, but monotonically. It means that along the motion, there is a relation. Instead of time, I can use psi again. And this phi function is not known to me. But of course, along that particular motion, I can take derivative, second derivative, and use passive dynamics, which I have, substitute relations for, instead of theta and theta dot and theta double dot as a function of psi and the derivatives, again, the same alpha beta gamma equation. And this is basically exactly the same equation we get in analysis of a human locomotion or human sitting down and the robotic humanoid robot when I would sit there. It appears to be another law of nature that the reduction to geometrical invariance always generates this type of dynamics of the generator of the individual motions. Okay, and now the question, whenever psi is increasing, I'm looking for some parameters, such as this dynamical system has a solution whenever psi is monotonically increasing. So angle rotates, so ball rotates, rotates, rotates. So, and main second artifact for searching for good parameters would be that the phase portrait of the system just on a plane where I have written psi, psi dot, have a solution which basically monotonically moving above zero velocity all the time. So it becomes a very simple thing to find. There is plenty of parameters which satisfy this type of uh, condition. Let's say people spent thousands of master phases projects hours or uh, master uh, PhD students to implement that in Carnegie Mellon, Northwestern University, there is attempts in MIT, Caltech, and it turns out that this is very important. This is, let's say, a way to solve the task, just to find the right dynamics of, of the motion generator and the right coordinates for presenting that particular behavior. 
Okay, so uh, this is what we have done. So let's see, we have chosen eventually this type of parametric set of functions, find dynamics of motion generator, choose some good parameters, and eventually in that particular study, this function pi depends on just one scalar parameter, which will be very difficult to find as a polynomial. You need to have some type of uh, polynomial that could be very high order. So it means that root of four through extended very complicated as per se. You need to have some type of indicator way to what you're going to present, what could be good basis functions to present to how many parameters you need to choose. Okay, and then if you need to have controller for shaping that motion, of course, you can use uh, another dynamics which generate for your control. Okay, so let's let's see movement movies. So first of all, we are looking for the particular let's say performance like that. So we would like to build robot lab. This is what human do. I'm saying that. This is not holonomic constraint. This is 3D motions. You see how agile the behavior. So if we're able to do that one, I think we get another price on equal. <laughs> but you see, it's not very fun. And also current models of contact are very limited. So there is clearly this, this, some patch of contact between this disc and... Okay. There is a movie on the, in our lab which are built for, say we have a number of butterflies. And I will comment now something very important for audience, you, you, you know this very well. So if I have one system and another system, and if I calibrate that system, search trajectory for that system, and calibrate that system and search trajectory for that system, and if they close enough, they should reproduce behavior in close version. So, and we would like to achieve here orbital exponential stability of particular behavior. In fact, small parameters in the system, let's say friction, for example, can substantially change behavior of your dynamics. And you will see now that we designed two controllers which should stabilize very similar behavior on almost identical dynamical systems. And you will see that in long run, you observe that they are behaving in very different ways. So at some point they stabilize behavior which has not been done by Douglas. <laughs> but in very long interval of time, clearly due to the friction change in one mode and another, it will be two different motions. So for control people, it becomes, let's say, interesting question. Is it possible to make synchronous? We have a colleague in, let's say, there is people who are involved in in synchronization. One of them was Hent Neymer, for example, from Netherlands. So the interest in the synchronization of various systems. Clearly, if this would be synchronized, they should be synchronized just through the control action. Is it possible? So how to overcome really small differences in dynamics, in description of dynamics, which we're not aware of? Yeah. So it means that if you think about that we now if I put not two, not three, but many, many such butterflies, can we synchronize rolling of many, many systems? Of course, clearly it cannot be done by human. Again, I repeat that none of the human able to do that. None. We haven't found anyone. To, to make just some type of trick by, by some stick, which, you, I mean, you have eyes, which your measurement system, you have, let's say, hands, and you human really do it in much, much better fashion because you could change the plane. You could slightly change it. The gravity will be not so aggressive. In this case, the, the, this is most aggressive situation you might think to plan and stabilize such motion. Okay, last. Uh, example is to show that eventually it's not big issue for if you shape now periodic trajectory for system which exists in multi-dimensional space, because now we just augment dynamics of one system, augment dynamics so that they have periodic trajectory, not for separated, but for one. We can design control which stabilizes the kick. You see? And this is a way to show that there is plenty of ways to generate controls, but we, the most of the value in this type of experiment is eventually trajectories, how to shape them. Okay, I will make now just conclusions, which are, I think, to summarize what I plan to say, 
which is a bit strange for people who are involved in artificial intelligence optimization. So first of all, uh, let's say making some abilities of robotic system, which about agile behaviors are very challenging. Very often you have no, let's say, even example what you're going to repeat by a new robotic system. Then what, where is the challenge? Eventually challenge shows up that learning for that type of behaviors, we typically meet continuum set of equality constraints. So I'm not coming to mathematics here because it could be another lecture, but typically it's very well known that if I have, let's say, quite number of constraints, but if they're inequalities, it's very easy to handle. Because it's, let's say any inequality separates some type of half of plane or any type of set, which another constraint separates another part of that set. So it's, but if I have equality constraints, it's the element of reduction. And this is very not true. Of, it depends on model you choose. Secondly, so it means that we need to have various representation behaviors through right choice of coordinates. It's basically where mathematics and mechanics meet. And this is what I didn't mention correctly about students who have been taking my class knows now what is transverse coordinates. <laughs> so it's a way to represent dynamics in vicinity in a, in a new set of coordinates which are not compatible with your original mechanical models. It's motion dependent set of coordinates which could be also analytically introduced. Then the arguments for representation of the motion, we call it nested or cascaded then time generate behavior, but eventually could be some useful variable which generates behavior through that variable. So time generates behavior of that particular motion generator, which generate all other degrees of freedom. Okay. And this is related to so-called searching for invariance of the motion dependent invariance for the for robotic system whenever we search motions. And most important that all this development is not done through optimization. So it's eventually, this is very good for human capability because whenever I do certain motions, it's very difficult to believe that I optimize something, almost impossible. And many motions which I do can be done in slight modifications. For example, I can sit down with rucksack, without rucksack, something what I have in my pocket. So my control system not taking care about these modifications. So it will change the motion I'm going to implement whenever I sit down by changing the environment conditions I'm going to do this before. And it means that we need to have some type of, whenever we're really interested in generating some interesting motion for robotic system, Optimization is useful. Clearly, it's part of our, let's say, standard tool to be used, but analysis of dynamics and representation of the motion is also very important. I think I spent all my time. We <laughs> also have some time for questions. Oh, so yes, yes. So, 10 minutes for question. I put my, <coughs> put the, 